Hello again. Like so many old people, most in fact, I rather think, I despair of the present and am gloomy about the future. I regard unrestrained immigration from Africa, for example, as a bad thing, likely to bring down much of the culture which has been carefully built up in Europe over the centuries. I don't like to see large changes. I prefer things the way they are, or even better, the way they used to be. That's how old people view the world. However, my fears about Europe might not be justified. It might not be the case that unrestrained immigration is necessarily a bad thing for the continent. In fact, looked at on a time scale of thousands of years, it may prove to be just what Europe needed. I don't say it is so, but it's certainly a possibility. Let me try and explain what I mean. A while ago I outlined a series of events which led to the rise of Europe as a driving force behind world history. This resulted from Homo sapiens from Africa leaving their own continent and entering the Middle East where they encountered the Neanderthals who were living there. This was perhaps 50 or 60,000 years ago. After mating with the Neanderthals, Homo sapiens ended up with 2 or 3% of Neanderthal genes. These had a great effect on the new Europeans who took over the continent from the Neanderthals. Every human, except those from Africa, have a few percent of Neanderthal genes, and this probably explains why Europeans have been so successful when it comes to building civilizations and inventing lots of stuff. It's a case of hybrid vigour, where two species mating together produce a type which is better than both parents. Now we stand poised at the brink of a similarly momentous event, and we have no idea at all how it's going to turn out. It may mean the decline of humanity, or it might, on the other hand, be just the thing to reinvigorate the human race and get it moving again in new and exciting directions. OK, I've talked uh, more than once on here about that first wave of Homo sapiens to leave Africa and what happened as a consequence over the next 50,000 years or so. It is, of course, only in retrospect that we are able to understand the course of events over this vast length of time. We may be on the cusp now of a similarly important time, the emergence of a second wave of Homo sapiens leaving Africa and settling in Europe. What this will mean in the long run is quite impossible to guess. It might be thousands of years before the full implications of what is now is happening will be properly assessed and understood. After those pioneering emigrants moved into the Middle East and began mating with the Neanderthals whom they found there, the great majority of those living in Africa were content to remain in that continent. For the next 50,000 years they simply stayed in their ancestral homeland, mating only with each other and not venturing out again into the rest of the world. This was the state of play when the descendants of that first wave to leave Africa returned from Europe in the phenomenon which we have come to know as colonialism. This was a one-way process. Europeans entered and left Africa at will, but the Africans remained where they were, <coughs> largely due to the medical knowledge which the Europeans brought with them, together with improvements in agriculture, the building of cities and so on, the population of Africa had soared in the last century. In 1955, 250 million people lived in Africa. That population has multiplied sixfold since then. In the next 30 years, it is predicted to double, rising to two and a half billion. In other words, in a century, the population of Africa would have multiplied by 12. Because of this, many Africans now wish to leave that continent and come to Europe. 
This is the second wave which I mentioned in the title of this video. We are seeing the first pioneers of this second wave already landing in Europe. Millions more are coming. The proportion of Homo sapien, well we might as well call them Homo sapiens plus, the Homo sapiens with a little something added in Europe was for 40,000 or 50,000 years, 100%. In other words, everybody in Europe belonged to the Homo sapien plus group. They were all Homo sapiens with a sprinkling of Neanderthal genes. Now that proportion is declining as more and more of the ordinary Homo sapiens from Africa move into the area. Presumably there will in the course of time be large-scale mating between the two groups, just as there was when the first wave of Homo sapiens moved out of Africa. We can't predict what the consequences of this new movement are likely to be. On the one hand, there are those who think that the end product of all this will be a decline in civilization and an erosion of all that Europe has produced. This dismal view is tied in with the historic distaste, of course, for the idea of miscegenation. There is, though, another possibility. This is that Europe has actually been declining for some while already, and that left to its own devices, it would degenerate further, slide lower and lower, until perhaps a Chinese empire rose and eclipsed it. Some people think they can see the beginnings of that happening already. If that's how things stand, then perhaps Europe could really benefit from an injection of new blood, new genes. This might not be comfortable, of course. I dare say that the Neanderthals were not at all pleased to have their long-established culture disrupted by all those people turning up from Africa either. They were happy enough and perhaps resented the newcomers. Ultimately, though, the hybridisation which took place produced a new human group who conquered the world and produced everything worthwhile in science, medicine and every other field. It might be that we are about to experience another burst of hybridisation with incalculable effects for the future. It may be 10,000 years before we can say if this was a good thing, revitalising Europe in all kinds of ways, or a bad thing, signalling the end of European culture. Only time will tell.